Hi, I'm Nick and this is the TBT channel. This is the third and final video on how to improve your HW30S. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to re-lubricate and rebuild your rifle. Now, <clears throat> I have two barrels in front of me because this gun, he has a 177 and a 22 barrel. I'm refitting the 22 because that is my preference. So I'll put that one to one side. <clears throat> right then where shall we start i've got my compression tube here i have already degreased my compression tube i have already deburred my compression tube it is ready to be put back together and here is my piston my piston has been cleaned it's been degreased i've removed any weights and washers from inside of it and i've polished the piston with approximately 160 to 180 grit uh, abrasive then approximately 240 or finer abrasive and finally metal polish he is ready to go in so what we're going to do you can use any molybdenum uh, molybdenum grease or paste i'm going to be using bum slide because it's our product and i've got plenty of it okay so we get our little pot of bum slide here we get some on our fingertip and we're just going to start off around the skirt of the piston because the skirt on this is actually a raised skirt so that's the main point that's going to be making contact with the wall of the piston and then from there we're just going to rub downwards towards the front with our finger now i am doing it properly this time because this is going to be used i'm really enjoying using this rifle it's going to be available to someone probably somebody watching this i would have thought so if you think it's something you'd be interested in, please get in contact. Um, it will be available at the beginning, well, mid-December will be the time. If you're in the UK, I mean, if you're elsewhere in the world, it'll be available anytime. But if you're in the UK, it will be mid-December mid when it's ready. Now, and I'm rubbing, you'll see I'm rubbing all the way to the front. I'm rubbing up the sides of the piston sill. Okay, that's because I want to lubricate the lip of the piston seal, but I don't want anything on the face of the piston seal because that will diesel. It doesn't leave much on the piston seal and you'll be able to tell if it hasn't got enough because what will happen is when you chrono, when you test the power, you'll see that every shot drops in power and then if you leave it for 10 minutes, it will go back up again. That is because there's not quite enough and it's heating up the piston seal and, and creating friction. So that's why that would happen. If that happens, a little bit more bum slide on your piston seal. So we just give him a little wobble and he goes down into there, into there. And I shall push him down with that. Next, we are going to fit the barrel. Now I've still got bum slide on my finger there and this is a good thing because we're going to get our little shims and we're just going to give a little rub in our fingers just to get a small coating of bum slide on them okay i've got some on my finger there as well only takes a very small amount you just want a fine amount of that on there and then we've got our cocking shoe which is going to sit inside of the piston and rub up against the piston and the inside of the chassis so we just want to get some bum slide on either side of that cocking shoe and just around there just a little dollop just to give it a nice bit of lubrication through uh, and then a small amount of it you'll see where it's been rubbing on the the metal work there as it goes backwards and forwards cocking you've got a tunnel which stops you getting through to that bit there don't worry just put some either side of it and it'll work its way in and maybe what's left in your finger just give it a rub there. Another thing I did actually, I think I forgot to mention, this knuckle joint here, similar to the HW50 and HW99, can be very tight. Just loosen that up and then it will work nicer. So that pushes through the tunnel and then drops into the piston. And there we go, that's in its channel. And now we want to line up the barrel while the gun, before we've put the spring into the gun, we want to line the barrel up because then you're not fighting the spring on the detent that holds the barrel shut. So we get our shim that we've just given a little rub with some bum slide, pop him there, and then we get our old friend, the Bic pen lid. 
use the sharp pointed bit of the pen lid to get it in there and then the rounded end to line him up thusly. We have got our nut and bolt and locking washers here. So we take off the nut and one of the locking washers. And I'm just going to give the shaft of the bolt a little rub with our bum slidey fingers before pushing it through there like that. Then we flip her over and we get our other shim for the other side and we do the same. Push him there, line him up with our big biro thingy, push it up into the gap and then turn that and that picks up the threads. While we're here, while we're here, now there is a small pin that goes into this point here and it holds the cocking arm down, stops it from rising up, stops the cocking shoe from coming out. So we want to refit that into there. So we get our brass hammer and just tap him into place. And then we want to get some bum slide again or whatever equivalent you're using and just rub it onto the back edge of the cocking arm there. Okay, because that is going to come into contact with that steel pin. And anywhere that you suspect there's going to be metal to metal contact, you want some kind of a uh, lubricant and bum slide is fantastic lubricant because it's got molybdenum, high content molybdenum disulfate in it. And that just prevents wear. You get a, a baby whap. Have a little wipe here. Now, we are going to tension our barrel, which means, again, this is all before the spring goes in. We're going to tighten the bolt down until we get some tension. Another thing before I put the tension on it, another thing, this has a very similar design to the HW99 in that it is possible for it to have a galling issue. If you move that, I'm going to have to change arms, sorry. If you move that up and down and you feel any tight spots where this is rubbing onto that pin, you just need to use some abrasive to take it down. This one isn't doing it, I've put bum slide on there. It's actually very smooth. Okay, so that is absolutely fine, but just be aware of that. So tensioning the barrel. After tightening that up, giving it a nip, and then what we need, oh, do you know what, that might be it straight away. We're looking for the barrel to just hold itself in any position on its arc of travel. Oh, that's a little too loose, a little too tight before. There we go. So any point from cocked to back, it has got enough tension in the barrel to hold its own weight. That then is the perfect tension to make sure you're not creating wear, but you're also making sure you get the maximum accuracy because the barrel isn't moving within the jaws. It's supported, it's got enough tension, but it isn't too tight that it's creating wear. So once that done is done, we can put our locking washer on the other side and put our nut on the other side and then tighten him down. You can tighten him down, it won't make any difference to this part because all the tension is done by the bolt. So now we have the barrel properly lubricated with the piston properly lubricated. There, we need to install our kit. Now in this video, I'm installing one of our new TBT HW30 F1 kits with the premium spring. If you watched the last video, you'll see that what I've done is it's a reduced uh, premium spring with a reduced F1 rear guide and a new 25 millimeter flange. And as if you've been watching this, you will know I've got tendons flapping around loose in that shoulder after a motorbike accident and I'm going to have to have surgery. So because this is one I'm going to be making, I'm only going to have limited numbers of these. So I think I'm probably just going to make 50 to start with. Hopefully that will get us up to Christmas but if you want one let me know because I'm only going to make a certain amount of these hopefully after that time these will be coming direct from the motorsport manufacturer that is making the kits but in the meantime it's kind of on a limited availability if you want one please let me know 
Now, this is a bit grubby and a bit greasy because it has been apart many times today already. Oh, I lost my favorite screwdriver. So what we're gonna do is first of all, we're gonna take the top hat out. Okay, what I just did there, I mean, I, I didn't know if it was, it's actually not as tight as I thought it was gonna be, or not as greasy as I thought it was gonna be, I should say. To get a guide out of a spring, uh, you need to give it a clockwise twist. Right, okay. It's always clockwise twist, and then it will slide out. If you try and pull it out straight, it probably won't come out. Um, so always clockwise, in or out. If you can't get it out, you've not had your Weetabix this morning or something, first port of call is Marigolds, they're awesome. Second thing is get your favorite screwdriver or whatever, put it below the spring like that. Then you hold it in place and you simply turn the spring and it pushes the top hat out like a corkscrew. There we are. So we take our top, that's where I was, take your top hat out and we are gonna put a small amount of bum slide into the hole where the latch rod sits to lubricate the latch rod. Then we're gonna put a small amount of bum slide around the edge of the top hat and then we're gonna push it into the spring. And then we are gonna do the same with our rear guide. So pop him there. Small amount of bum slide into where the latch rod goes to lubricate the latch rod. And then a small amount of bum slide on the shaft of the guide to lubricate inside of the spring. And that goes back in there and that is great. Next, we're gonna lubricate the spring. For this, we get our sachet of grease. Now you get a sachet of grease in all of our kits. This is just standard molybdenum grease, like LB2, Abbey stuff, all that kind of thing. So what we're after getting is a small amount of this squeezed into the palm of one hand. And then we get our spring and pull it through that fist and spread it evenly up and down the spring. And that's enough. It gives it enough that it's not gonna reverberate inside of the gum, but not so much that it's loose in there and gonna get flung around. Lastly, we're gonna get our slip washer and we're gonna stick that in place using the grease. And then we are gonna push that up inside of the piston. And now if you'll excuse me just for two minutes while I wash my hands. Close enough for jazz. So where are we? My hands are clean, that is glorious. Next, we need to put the end block back in. Now, this was a little bit tight, so I'm just gonna get a small amount of bum slide and put it around the leading edge of this as it goes in. And that will just spread down then as it's put into the hole. It's just an aluminium kind of cast thing. So not as smooth as it could be. And just a small amount of bum slide on the front face of there. And we put that in to here. Now there's not an awful lot of preload on this because as I, I, I've mentioned, it, this is not, a, a high powered air rifle this is a low powered air rifle and to try and turn it into a high powered air rifle ruins it so it's only a small amount of preload and all you need to do is push it down and then put the screw in but with my duff shoulder i can't so i'm actually going to use a spring compressor just because i can because i've got one and to show you how it would work and it makes my life a little easier. Now, all it is, is a sash clamp, okay? You can buy these from Screwfix or any kind of shop like that, tool bank. Get a longer one, because then you can use it for anything. You can use it with barrel on or barrel off, whatever you want to do. But they're adjustable. You just put a nut and bolt through at whatever height, uh, length you want it to be. And what I've done is I've just got a small piece of wood and screwed it on at this end so that when I put it on the bench it is the correct height for the gun it's not flopping around all over the place and I would also suggest you just chuck a towel over the whole lot when you go to use it just to prevent you hitting it against the metal but I'm not going to because I don't really need to but what I am going to do is use a short stroke extension I mean, it's, it's, this is just 
It's just to protect the end of the barrel, okay? It can be any piece of plastic, it could be a bit of cloth, but I'm gonna use a short stroke extension because I happen to have a few hanging around. And then I'm gonna use a plastic washer at this end, okay? And that's just to give me a little bit of clearance so that when I do this up, everything is gonna be in the right place. So bring it closer towards me. Then all we do is turn that handle and it goes in and it's very easy and it's very simple. Now, when you've got it in the right place, all of this spring pressure is held by this teeny tiny little screw, seemingly, but it isn't because when it's in the gun, you've also got the big bolt from the front of the trigger guard going through it. And you've also got both of the pins from the trigger unit itself going through it. But what I would suggest you do right now is rather than just rely on the tiny little grub screw, it does need to go in, but I would check it is lined up. It needs to come out a small amount and turn around a small amount. Just for now, we're gonna put that big bolt into there. So if anything happens and this slips out, it's already under control, it's not an issue. And then we get our small screw and our favorite screwdriver. It keeps hiding. I shouldn't be gray. I should have a, I should have an orange favorite screwdriver. And then we're going to put that screw into the hole there. Like that, finally. Then we can wind off the pressure and the spring compressor has done his job. Pop him there safely. Then next, put those bits to one side. Just check that one's tweaked up how we want him. Now we're going to put our trigger unit into place. I have adjusted my trigger as I want it as per the record trigger adjustment video. I have got my safety pin, safety catch with its spring. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a little bit of tiny amount of bump so just to keep it nicely lubricated in there pop the spring and the safety catch into place and our cocked trigger unit into place behind it and what we are after doing i always like to have something white underneath it just so i can see better to line everything up so the shorter guide goes at the rear the longer one to the front so i'm going to pop in the longer one first i'm going to pop in the longer one first there and then the rear one making sure that the safety is just kept in place that's how you locate the safety into the correct place is to put the front pin in first and then move the rear pin to position while holding the safety there make sure that is lined up perfectly tap that through and fire off the trigger that's it all that remains now is to put the stock back on and once that is back on there it is ready to go it's a pleasant rifle to work on but more importantly it's a very nice rifle to shoot as i've said this one may be available contact me um please hit like subscribe and notifications and you'll get told of any more videos coming up and they've got we've got lots and lots of things coming up soon thank you very much for watching and goodbye